Coming up on show 892, have we just seen Tesla's new battery cell leaked? Stick around, I'll tell you more. Plus on the podcast today, GM going their own way and building their own systems in-house. Kia previewing the next seven years worth of EVs and... How much is the BMW iX3 for my UK listeners? Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily for what happened on Wednesday, 16th of September. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story so you don't have to. I'm here to save you time and sift through the stuff to only really tell you about what you need to know. We'll start off then with that GM news. Um, GM are going to build a whole family of electric car drive systems themselves. They're doing it all in-house to compete with Tesla. They want to go vertically integrated. Now, it's one of the ways that they could have taken a step forward. Many people will say a smart way for GM to progress. According to Inside EVs, their future EV lineup will be powered by an interchangeable family of electric motors and drive systems the company has already designed, and they plan to develop and produce any more components completely in-house and themselves. That goal is to vertically integrate themselves, much like Tesla. In other words, being in control, being able to pick up the phone to the people that designed the drivetrains, the powertrains, the motors, and for them people to be working for your company, uh, not an external company where you're just a, con- a customer and having to join the queue with everybody else. It's a smart way. Uh, some people are saying to develop EVs rather than outsourcing for EV parts, uh, which could be quicker, could be cheaper as well. You never know. Uh, GM have said their plan will be five drive units and three motors. And that's all they need to really make a full array of vehicles. And that's everything. From their their two-seater sports cars to the biggest pickup trucks you can imagine. Uh, Following suits with uh, their battery systems, the ultimate... Sorry, (laughs) I keep... (laughs) Every time I say Ultium, have a mental note, say, don't say ultimate, and then what comes out of my mouth is the wrong word. Uh, The Ultium system, according to GM. The EV drive systems are typically referred to as E-axles. A gear, a motor... And the power electronics, everything required in this one box to move the car, plus battery system, means they're doing it all themselves. I'll pop a link to Inside EVs in the show notes if you want to read more. All right, let's talk about Hyundai next, launching a new Tucson with a plug-in hybrid powertrain, which is great. Two different uh, wheelbases as well, a short and long wheelbase version of the new Hyundai Tucson. A pretty big car, pretty big SUV for those that want a big family car or just need loads of space. It is on the bigger end of that uh, that typical kind of family size SUV crossover. And uh, up until now, it's needed some big engines to power it, things like 2.5 litre Uh, diesels and uh, hybrid powertrains as well, relying on a bit of battery. But now I'm delighted to say a plug-in version coming soon. And why am I talking about a car that, if you don't think the Tucson is a very sexy car to put second in the news today, it's because they've sold 7 million of them uh, since the introduction of the Tucson. Somewhere 7 million people have said, all right, I'll have one of those. Uh, And so a car that, well, I've heard the name, I've probably followed one down the road before, had no idea, but actually Hyundai taking a really popular model like this and adding a plug socket on the side of it, even though it's not full electric, it's only a plug socket for a plug-in hybrid, I still think, I think is a really important story that sometimes gets overlooked, that these kind of cars are bought in mega numbers in some countries and many of those local miles will all be done on electric. Uh, The new model goes on sale this month in Korea, in the US and global markets as a 2022 model year, but from the very beginning of next year. If you are interested, I'll pop a link to Green Car Congress in the show notes. Now, staying with Hyundai, Kia, a family of companies, Genesis as well, they're previewing the seven electric cars that they'll be launching. Uh, Kia just released a screenshot, well, it's not a screenshot, it's a a design sketch of seven EVs all laid out in a row. These are the seven full electric cars that Kia will be bringing to market and making up a quarter of their global sales as well. 25% of their sales will be these cars. Uh, Long on vision but short on details is how Autoblog explains it because, yeah, this this picture uh, from Kia is the only picture that we've got 
to go on. Some silhouettes of cars. And if we look closely, well, yeah, down the left-hand side of these sketches is an SUV crossover sports car in there somewhere. But look, ultimately, they're just black and white sketches. I mean, goodness. The reason why I love Kia is because they were early and they did it well. So with the, the Soul, the Nero and Hyundai as well with the Kona, uh, those cars have been on the road for a long time now. And actually, whenever I talk to someone who's bought one or has one, they really like those cars. They like the vehicles. They're engineered well. They've got really big battery sizes and they've led the way. Now, uh, Kia and Hyundai, uh, so that, that group of companies uh, will be coming with a new platform, an 800 volt platform uh, that will be the basis of many of their future EVs as well. But we'll get on to that story in a moment because let's talk Tesla now and some pictures that I I saw online actually I saw on Twitter because the writer of this website a guy called Fred tweeted it out and said has anyone seen this battery cell before and I thought that was kind of interesting that was yesterday and then today I noticed it's gone up as a an article on the electric website that says they are convinced they think this is the new battery cell from Tesla. Now, if you ask me, it looks like someone's taken the wrapper off for a big tin of baked beans, and, and now they think it's a battery cell. It's about that size, about those dimensions, because it's pictured in someone's hand. I guess it could be a very, very small hand. But either way, it's that kind of cylinder, that kind of size, like a, like a say, you know, like a, a big tin of spaghetti for the for, of kids' spaghetti. And so, Electrek claims this is the new cell that will be coming on battery day, on the 22nd, uh, that this is what Elon Musk will be announcing. They are convinced of it. It's uh, much, much, much bigger than the existing 2170 form factor cells, which are currently used in the Model 3 and the Model Y. And they are also... Uh, being so much bigger, able to take about four times the volume in the cell, which means the cells are bigger, so fewer casings and fewer cells per pack, which is another way forward to reduce how quickly or the the how efficient how efficiently you can make those batteries. Tesla applied for a patent, uh, a new battery cell with a tabless electrode uh, back in May. Uh, that was a a Twitter user, wasn't it called Eva? I remember Elon's response at the time. It was something like, this is more important than it sounds. And you think, okay, right, tablets, important. Stick it in the back of my head. Remember it for battery day. Need to learn what it means. And so, yeah, we find out more next week. But if these cells are going to be used in the cars, that could be a really, really interesting development because maybe it's a, an exclusive thing to Tesla. I had presumed, by the way, that they would be using Prismatic because there's either... Generally speaking, the cylindrical cells, like big AA batteries, or tins of beans these days, uh, and then there are pouch cells, which uh, pretty much as it sounds, a big pouch-shaped battery cell, uh, or prismatics, which are square, they're hard, kind of the hard plastic on the outside, and they can come in many, uh, many shapes and sizes. If I said it was like, like a briefcase, that is you know, just a one possible but they can be kind of long and thin or you know, fat and chubby and, and every possible uh, permutation in between but i'd presumed knowing nothing about batteries that tesla would go to the prismatic form factor because you know you can put maybe i don't know four six eight ten because you can they're so big into uh, cell to pack technology whereas these ones that electric claims are tesla's leaked battery cells still look pretty small it's going to take a ton of these inside a, a car but hey they know what they're doing which leads me on to clean technica and a writer who i really rate dr max holland has says that elon musk has already leaked one of the big things to do with tesla battery day now elon said on the q2 on earnings call uh, the real limitation on tesla growth is cell production at an affordable price that's the real limit so that's why we're going to talk a lot more about this on battery day because it's the fundamental scaling constraint there's two general classes of cell. There's iron phosphate and nickel-based. Nickel-based cells have a higher energy density, so longer range. Obviously, those are needed for something like the semi, uh, where every unit of mass that you add in the battery pack, you subtract in car cargo. 
so it's important to have a an efficient and long range pack. However, with passenger vehicles, the total vehicle efficiency has gotten good enough that we're actually comfortable with having an LFP pack in Model 3 in China. And so Elon went on. So that is that could be the essence of Battery Day next week, which is possibly this LFP, which is lithium ion phosphate, by the way, the cells that make up the car, they're not new. I mean, they've been used in mass transit buses and things because they're really boring. They're very stable chemistry, low, lower energy density than the current cells that Tesla put in their cars. So your range wouldn't be as good. But if anyone has noticed what I've noticed over the couple of years, uh, the last couple of years of Tesla, they've really, really focused on efficiency. And just those one and two percent gains here and there, and and uh, and more efficiency on the motor side, and 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 just those constant small improvements, and they all add up. And actually, when you make those cars more efficient, you can use a cell which has less uh, energy than a, uh, a a different cell that they're using at the moment, because if it's twenty percent cheaper than a nickel-based cell, then there, what do you do? Do you take that as margin? Do you take it as profit? Or do you reduce the price of the cars? I think Tesla will probably reduce the price of the cars because they're operating already at a 20 something percent margin, which is already very healthy. Cash flow's good. Uh, they're spending money as fast as they can make it. They're growing very quickly. I think they'd I think they'd use it to reduce the price of the cars in China and eventually elsewhere. Definitely the Model Y is coming out of Berlin next year. So that could be it. It could be like, hey, we're going to use lithium-ion phosphates for our passenger cars with lower ranges. Uh, you know, they'll still get 300 miles. I don't think they're going to dip below, below that. And then there'll be some more cutting-edge technology, some more you know, nickel-based uh, cells um, that are more expensive to make but have better performance and use that in things like the Roadster and the semi-truck. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just guessing with you. So uh, it's all things to think about before Battery Day uh, next week. I think also a, a lot of that focus on Battery Day is going to be them talking about how they're made. Like I think people are going to tune in and, and, and find a much more hardcore engineering presentation than the kind of big, sexy, splashy car launches that perhaps they've seen before. I think in many ways it's yeah, it's going to be over my head, but uh, we'll see. Right, let's talk about BMW's iX3 for my UK listeners. It is coming to the UK. It's launching now. And if you would like the iX3, a couple of specs you can go for, the Premier or the Premier Pro, and all the gadgets you could possibly want in this. Very luxurious uh, BMW electric version of the X3, 62,000 or 65,000 pounds. You would hope that you would get all of the nice gadgets with that, but the performance is pretty good. The iX3 does, goes 0 to 62, that's 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 6.8 seconds. That's okay. Limited to 112 miles an hour. Uh, you get 80 kilowatt hour gross battery, which is 74 kilowatt hour usable. And on the WLTP test cycle here in Europe, 279 miles of range. And I'll pop a link to that story in the show notes if you want to read more. Last week, we talked about Lewis Hamilton joining Extreme E, electric racing, off-road electric racing. And uh, now we have another team entering Cupra, which is the performance bit of Seat, which is the Spanish bit of VW, uh, announced they're entering Extreme E, the first car maker to officially participate in the new electric off-road championship. They've paired up with Abt Sportsline for this new racing partnership. Uh, Matthias Ekstrom to become the team's male driver. And if you wondered why I stressed that, because all teams will have one of each sex. Under Extreme E's gender equal format, teams have to field one male and one female driver, says carscoops.com today. Uh, so we will see more car makers coming into Extreme E, I have no doubt at all. And Cupra, ah, the first ones going in. I'm really looking forward to this because it's going to be, these are off-road, extreme, uh, you know, pardon the pun, but it is Extreme E, extreme looking cars, massive knobbly tyres. They're going to be on everything from uh, desert sands to ice caps as well, all to raise awareness of these areas of the planet that are being affected by climate change. And part of the social action that the, the Extreme E are doing is taking a team of people to ensure that, yes, we know that driving 
cars around certain places might not be. Uh, it isn't the most uh, friendly thing we can do to the planet, but certainly they will leave all of those areas in a better condition than they found them. And in people watching this, these racing events, uh, they'll have an, a captive audience to promote these amazing places around the world to and show uh, what we're doing to deserts and rainforests and glaciers and ocean locations. So uh, that's a next year thing, I think, or a couple of years away. The uh, the electric car has 550 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in four and a half seconds, but it'll be the speed at which it goes off-road that'll be deeply impressive. Final story today. According to Green Car Reports, uh, one of the suppliers who supplies the major car makers say that in the next couple of years, we're going to be moving our EVs to 800 volt systems. Now, uh, that's only interesting uh, if you are a super nerd like I am, but most EVs are 400 volts at the moment. And uh, the supplier Delphi Technologies announcing they're supplying 800 volt inverters for all future luxury cars to an unnamed car maker. Uh, they claim that they'll be supplying inverters to three out of the four top global car makers, indicating a broad shift over the next couple of years to 800 volt systems for high-end EVs at least. These new inverters can of course charge 800 volts, but also greatly reduce charging times compared to today's 400 volt systems and have some efficiency gains on there as well. Lucid, of course, unveiled a 920 volt system uh, recently and all of that work being done uh, to unify the power uh, delivery system, the motor, the inverter, the software, the transmission, the battery pack, all designed by Lucid all from the ground up and all designed to work together. Of course, Porsche have the Taycan on the market already. Rivian, General Motors, they're all doing 800-volt systems. Earlier on in the podcast, I told you about Kia Hyundai, their new platform. Uh, everything seems to be moving towards this higher voltage uh, pack architecture for and you know and it's not like a night and day improvement i just gather it's it's an efficiency gain and helping you charge on those 350 kilowatt fast chargers as well but you can get some pretty amazing speeds out of the 400 volt systems on the roads right now so uh, that's your podcast for today another day of really exciting optimistic news as people work towards a better green electric future. I love doing this. It's so good uh, to share these stories with you. I hope you enjoyed the show uh, today. Get in contact, leave a comment. Email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave a comment on the YouTube show. There are 891 previous shows in the archive. I've got a new premium partner to announce before the month is out. Uh, hello to our existing ones, though. Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati, Audi of Cincinnati East, Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East, NationalCarCharging.com and AlohaCharge.com. Uh, I love following, uh, particularly on LinkedIn, I must admit. Uh, their updates, always very, very interesting. And uh, Derek Riley from the EV Review Ireland YouTube channel. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. Oh, do remember, there's no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>